I forgot my green screen. Let's see me go up. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Hold on. little peek behind the the curtains here so what I need to do now is go in here to video capture device filters turn on my chroma key there we go and then I have to raise my hand to this side because I flipped it and I have to say you come over here all right now now we're starting everybody uh, I'm doing good good morning everybody uh, well, we're going to start out I think, which is a really quick exercise. Um, I mean, y'all are probably tired of seeing this by now, but I think, you know, looking at the design, I think this could be a really, a really nice, simple start to do a little bit of a speed ZBrush thing. So I'm gonna hit the comma key on my keyboard. Um, you know, that might actually be funner. Let's, I was gonna start with just the male head, but let's, Let's make this a little bit weirder. Let's go over here to the ZBrush demo anime head. Load that up. I'm going to turn off floor, turn off perspective, turn on X symmetry, turn off a line cursor to surface, and we'll just start with this head. So this would be our base head here. So I'm going to start layering up um, some things on here. So first I'm going to go through here. Let's go in here to subtool and duplicate this off. Actually, let me check my <clears throat> check my levels here. Yeah, let me turn that up a little bit. A little bit better. Everybody can hear me. Cool. Hey, I love you too. Thanks for showing up. And um, I'll keep an eye on the chat today. I don't know if I'm going to be hanging out there as incessantly as I normally do. But so here, we're going to go through here. We're going to kind of on our duplicate. We're going to go through here and we're mask out. I'm also going to go down here to my geometry tab. Make sure I don't have any subdivision history, which on the anime head you shouldn't, since that's just a, a dynamesh. And we're just going to mask this out. And then on the side of the head here, I think it's probably going to go down into here. So I'm going to say mask lasso here. So I'm going to control tap to invert that. And now I've got uh, this kind of look. So we're going to take this and we're going to say, uh, if I turn on polyframe here and we go into skin shader four, I'm going to go down here to geometry edge loop. Say edge loop mask border, control drag. Let's go into solo mode, control shift tap the red one, and then just say delete hidden. So now we have uh, this. Uh, the ears themselves I don't really need. In fact, I can hold down Shift and go into Sculptures Pro and kind of turn those into little nubbins. I don't want to remove them entirely, uh, but just kind of knock those down a bit. And then now, I think we're good to go. So I have X symmetry turned on. I'm going to go into my, I can go into my custom menu here. And I'm going to be going a little bit fast. I'm sorry. So feel free to uh, say in the comments I'm going too fast. Uh, the YouTube comments, but there's a link to my YouTube channel, which in there, if you want to just kind of, if you're just starting out with ZBrush and you're like, I'm branded to ZBrush. I don't know how to use ZBrush at all. Why are you doing a live stream where you're not explaining the intro to ZBrush? Um, Cause that would be boring if I came on here every single time and did an intro to ZBrush class. So there's your intro to ZBrush right there. Now, if you go to my art station page, there's also some intro to ZBrush stuff on there and specifically Probably this one, if you want to start there, you can navigate. There's a ton of stuff on the R Station YouTube channel, obviously, uh, but that's a good start. So I'm going to go into my custom menu, but underneath Geometry Ziri Mesher is going to be where we can turn this into lower res geo. That's quad, so a depth size down to zero to make it nice, even quads. Um, you know, we'll just say eh, target polygon count of 2.5, let's say something like that. We're just going to knock this down. Um, interestingly enough, I guess I can tell you what we're going to make. I'm not going to put anything in here that's going to have spoilers or anything, but it's basically going to be something like this. And the reason, you know, it's, it's topical, but also it's just simple enough to go over a couple different techniques uh, and it isn't going to take all stream. So that's why I like it. Now, underneath this mask and the hood, there's a little bit going on. And if you're going to make it so that you can have it modular, like, you know, have a hood down, hood up, 
version, mask on, mask off, you know, you need to know a little bit about the construction. And one of the things about the construction is uh, there's actually a strip that goes down the back of the head. So this is actually two separate fabrics. So I'm going to hold down control shift before I see remesh. I'm going to go in here to slice curve and I'm just going to go uh, straight down the back of the head. And then uh, it's not a mirrored operation. So I'm going to go in here to deformation mirror across the X and then geometry modify topology mirror and weld across the X. So now we get that strip down here. Now I kind of need, I'm going to have this strip stop, uh, I guess down the neck. So I'm going to hold down control shift. God, his neck is so skinny. Um, let's do this. Instead of using slice, let's hold down control, go in here to mask pin. I'm going to mask down the center of his head and then I'm going to modify this mask will be a little bit easier. So if I hold down control, go in here to mask pin and then we're just going to say, okay, mask you hold down control alt. And if you don't need to see these lines, you can just literally turn off the line. I also turned off uh, Sculptor's Pro, by the way. I don't know if I called that out necessarily. There we go. And then from the side, hold down control, go into mask lasso, control alt. Now we've got a mask here. And then with this mask, like we did before, go in here to, uh, and you don't have to do this. You can hit, if you have line turned back on, you can hit control W. So it'll just kind of alias that line. If you want to clean that up, there's a couple different ways. Uh, one way to do it. Go in here to masking, turn on groups, mask your border, control tap to invert, polish by features, open circle, and that'll really polish that line out and that'll kind of straighten that line. So now when we go in here to, again, zero mesh, uh, depth target polling on count, depth slides down to zero, then you know where that is now because we were just in there. Geometry zero mesher. Oops, one thing we got to turn on, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero because they're already smooth. Um, and the reason I turn smooth groups down to zero is it tends to average those verts where I don't get to control them as much as I want to. There we go. So now we have nice even geometry and a little strip down the back that we can uh, turn into a different material. <laughs> yeah, speed it up. Um, can we assign keyboard shortcuts for top and front view? Not that I know of. I mean, if you, yeah, you can hold down shift as you're turning and that'll kind of snap it to your orthographic views. You also may have preferences, oh, cam view turned on, and then you can use, you know, these or just grab that thing and flip it around. But uh, yeah, I don't know that there's a, a hot key for storing a camera. I mean, if you wanted to, you can go in here to document, zap link properties. You can set camera views in here and maybe store it, or you can go in here to movie, timeline show and you can say okay store um, store and then you can use your arrow keys to kind of flip between those but um I don't, yeah I don't and in fact we're going to get into some you can actually use movie timeline show to store uh, reference if you want to match reference which in this case since I'm using a kind of a, a blobby head uh, anime head it's going to look a little bit weird um, but that's okay so now, uh, on the original head here, this is still just original uh, Dynamesh. I'm going to hold down Shift. I'm going to try on Sculptors Pro again, so I can kind of eat away at that geometry. And we're just going to get that geo um, inside of our mask a little bit here. So we have our original head, and then we have our mask going here. Now, from this point, if I want these to be two separate materials or I want to model on them separately, I'm going to hold down Shift and turn off Sculptors Pro now. Um, don't overthink this, Mike. Uh, there's a couple different ways to go, go about it, and I do want to put some puckering down the side that's going to affect them both, uh, but I can do it individually. Yeah, let's do this. I'm going to hold that control shift, pop or isolate just this uh, poly group, obviously, and then I'm going to go in here to split hidden. That's, of course, under your subtool split menu. And now we have two separate subtools. We got this little strip, and then we got this head here. Uh, and now we can feel free to model these however we want. Now, I can add thickness to this. I can go through here with like my um, couple different ways. Okay, I thought this was gonna be a, a simple one, but with my usual tangents here. You can go in here to edge loop. You can turn on panel loops, turn down polish. You can just pop out some thickness on here. You can go in here to subtool extract, uh, smooth down, because it's already pretty smooth. Uh, change the thickness to what you want. 
uh, and then you can just extract or I like to go in here for a little bit more control and it's on a simple object um, go into your Z modeler brush BZM hover over a face Q mesh polygroup ball or extrude polygroup ball just hover over face space bar again like I linked before if you want to know the basics of this somewhere in here yeah intro to ZBrush Z modeler videos 32 you can check out more oops I forgot to send that our station link. there you go and there you go um, when you try to repeat reference is it better to turn perspective on or not yeah um, yes I generally have perspective off as I model just because I just I'm used to it uh, but yeah if I'm trying to match a focal length or something on my camera um, then yeah that definitely comes in handy and in fact even when you do have perspective on you're gonna see as I go to the right and the left it kind of goes it kind of what's the word I'm looking for it kind of shifts the head uh, and in fact in underneath the draw menu you can change the focal length so like 35 millimeter 85 millimeter or change it manually in here you can match that but if you're gonna put in like a reference that has like you know front three-quarter a front and a side and the focal length is different on all your images it gets to be a nightmare however underneath the plugin I have a ref switcher plugin um, is a really good plugin here let me see ref ZBrush ref switcher um, Nick this is Nick's uh, reference switcher it comes in handy and we'll use it today uh, basically what it does is allow you to store and save views you can assign hotkeys to those views and you can set a focal a different focal length for every single image and you don't have to have the image like you know in spotlight over here and in here and in here it'll you can take up the whole front of the screen dial in your focal shift and it'll store all those settings um, very useful if you're matching reference I'm not gonna probably have to use it exactly uh, because again I'm starting with the anime head um, I just maybe semi inappropriate for the subject matter we're doing but anyway I'm gonna go in here with my ZModeler brush BZM extrude polygroup ball uh, I'm just gonna pull out here you're gonna see we have uh, thickness on here you could also go in here to geometry if you're not ready to commit just yet you can go in here to dynamic turn smooth subdivision down to zero and just crank that thickness up and the offset set at zero so it's actually thickening from the middle so if I take offset to 100 it'll thicken from that from our base geometry here so we'll go ahead and make that thickness a little bit less here and then same thing for this middle strip here we'll just turn on dynamic smooth subdiv down to zero and just crank up that thickness and we'll just kind of match uh, that thickness there yay so now <laughs> that shouldn't have taken as long as it did but you know a lot of cool I don't know if cool is the right word but a lot of techniques in here so that's going to be our first layer and looking and again I don't want to do spoilers so I'm going to keep some of this reference hidden from you uh, looks like there is some um, piping around that mask front area uh, and then these are just going to be separate sculpted so let's do some piping real quick now I've kind of pulled an oopsie where I have these two separated out but I do want piping to go across this entire front piece no nope, not a huge deal if I go through here you're gonna see this one has a lot more undo history so I'm gonna duplicate this off I'm gonna go back to the one that has a lot of undo history go into solo mode I'm just gonna go back to where I have everything together again I can hit control W if I want to because I'm really what I'm worried about is just not worried what I'm looking for is just this border right here so now what we can do and I just want that top border so along the bottom here we'll go back into our Z model brush I'm gonna turn off perspective hover over an edge I'm gonna say close convex hole and boop go ahead and close that off so now when I go in here to my stroke menu I'm gonna go in here to curve I'm gonna just open up all these curve options here uh, we're gonna frame our mesh our open border mesh so turn these other two off and then you can just frame that open border and then you can go in here with like BC brush curve uh, strap snap or something like that I'm not gonna actually do this but one option you could do is to frame this mesh here and then it's already masked so I'm going to go back into my subtool split menu and say split mask points or split on mask points again subtool split on mask points and then that'll give you um, you know piping that you can play with however I tend to like 
a little more control. So again, I'm gonna go back to this one here and I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this. Probably you can extrude edges. So we can go in here to extrude, um, hover over an edge, extrude edge loop. We can start pulling out an edge and then tap alt. You can just extrude an edge like this. Um, you can also go in here to, you know, we'll extrude a polygroup all. So extrude all the faces. And then off of this border here, you can tap alt and get a new geometry here. So now I'm literally manually pulling out, um, uh, what am I, what was it? it's not piping, is it? It's a, uh, oh, maybe it is. Whatever that's called, that little strip there. Um, so that's another way you could pull out geometry. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to isolate just that purple polygroup here, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. We've already been there, so I'm not gonna do show you where that menu is again. And then I'm gonna hold down uh, space bar, hovering over a face with my Z modeler brush and say extrude polygroup island. So I'm just gonna take this one here and just tap, sh hold down shift as I pull. That's gonna pull along that surface normal. So now I can go through here and just pull along the surface normal to indicate exactly the thickness that I want that piping to go. And if I want it to go up or down, left or right, just kind of move this around. So now we've got piping. Although I did forget that I had a little extra, I, I framed where I extruded uh, everything. So geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And since I already have slice, I can just tap control. That'll switch it temporarily to a visibility. That's how I was able to grab that one. Um, this could be a Spider-Man, absolutely. Good point. Um, cool, cool ZBrush. Uh, do you still use Quadro? I think that's it. Yes, this is Quadro, K-U-A-D-R-O. So this is, um, good call. Let's see here. Um, Quadro, so this allows me, um, it's different than pure ref. Uh, in that I'm able to have a bunch of images around ZBrush. I don't have to have anything behind it or like just because I have two huge monitors. This just allows me to put a lot of reference just around my screen here. Um, and I can also load different, uh, I guess, if, you know what? Um, I think there's some videos. Oh yeah, getting started. There are some videos. Uh, you know what, let's just go to you watch on YouTube. So how do you, use and it's me, it's me doing it. Um, oh, you can't remove the explode icon. I, I think it depends on your, if your monitor resolution isn't 1920 by 1080 at least. Uh, my monitor here is way bigger than what I'm actually recording in ZBrush. But yeah, if it's, yeah, explode maybe like stuck way down here. I don't know if you may not be able to grab it. You can go in here to preferences, custom, oh, not custom UI. Um, config, no, interface, UI, and you can change your button size down just a bit. Just turn that number down. You have to restart ZBrush. Also turn off wide buttons. I don't think that'll affect these ones necessarily, but um, that'll kind of maybe shrink your interface enough although no that's probably not going to affect these ones but yeah you get a long strip down here uh speaking of if you want to change your custom ui we've talked about this i've sent you the r station link um okay, let's go in here we can say custom custom interface and menus so video 42 in the basics here will walk you through all of that so we got our piping here and we've got our two separate pieces of cloth here. So we're working our way uh, to the main event, which is gonna be this big shape in here. So like I mentioned before, you can go in here to texture import. And again, I don't wanna put any spoilers on here. So I'm gonna leave my window down below. But I'm just gonna grab a couple different views. Uh, let's say a front, a three quarter, and maybe almost a side. I'm gonna say open. So now I'm gonna say texture, I'm gonna add one of these, and then I'm gonna say plus sign, and that's gonna put that right uh, here in my screen, and then we can take this opacity and drop it down. <clears throat> so now I can go through here, and I can set my face behind here so that we're kind of matching. Now again, this is gonna be a little bit more stylized, or 
fitting his head's gonna make it a little bit more cutesy. Uh, I don't know what the right word for that would be necessarily, but different than fitting a human proportioned head. So I don't really need to use a reference in this case, um, but just to kind of show you, that's how you can load in spotlight reference. And again, like we did before, movie, timeline, show, you can go ahead and you can you turn on perspective. I'm gonna drag off these dots to delete them. You can set a new one. So now if you go through here and you move your head, you can just use your arrow key to snap it back. However, like I said before, you can go in here to perspective and you can go in here to draw and you can change your focal length in here to whatever you want to kind of match this. But, you know, if you want to load in more reference, well, you can go in here to texture, you can grab another image, you can add it to your spotlight and you can like put them side by side. But now, like I mentioned before, if I hit Z, you know, this, you can kind of put it over here, but if this is a different focal length than this, you're gonna kind of get messed up. Um, and then also, like I said before, as you start dragging it left to right, it starts skewing the head a little bit. So instead of doing all that, again, I'm gonna use that link I sent out earlier, which is this ref switcher. So now what I can do is I can just, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this out here. So I hope I didn't mess it up, but so I've got my image in here and I've got, um, so I went in here, I selected the texture, I hit add and that added it to my spotlight. If I hit Z, that goes into sculpting mode. So I can go through here and I can go through and I can sculpt and I can match my reference in here. And I'm not even gonna use movie timeline. Uh, the other one I mentioned was document zap link. You can set front back and have little keys for those. Uh, but again, I'm not gonna do that either. So now what I can do is I can go through here and I can say ref switcher, I'm gonna add a new project. Cool, it's been added, so now I'm in the Squid Games product, and now I can go through here and I can start um, saving views. So if I want to, I can say, okay, my perspective is on, I can go in here to draw, I can say, okay, 50 millimeters is probably fine, I'm gonna save this view. And now I'm gonna go in here to uh, texture, we're gonna load up a different view here, we're gonna add that to our spotlight here, and this one we can go ahead and delete, and then this one, I hope I'm using this right, I don't, I don't do a lot of reference stuff lately, but something like this. And then we can go ahead and match, you know, our camera view again, while we're modeling, we can match this camera view. And then we can go in here, we can say view number two. And just for the heck of it, we'll do one more texture, add this front three quarter here, scale this down just a bit, delete this out of here. Hit Z. And then we'll match this one again. We're using the entire screen and we can change different focal lengths here. So if I go in here to draw, I'm like, eh, this one's more 85 or eh, this one's more, not that probably, I don't think they probably changed their lenses for these. Eh, maybe they did, I don't know. But let's say this is more a 35 millimeter. Change those as much as you want, save you three. Now what I can do is I can store hotkeys for these. So I can go in here to say control alt, tap this button and we'll say um, alt one. Um, and it'll sign that hotkey and then control alt and then alt two for view and then control alt tap and then alt three. So now when I go through here, I can either click load view that'll load up my reference and change the, change it back to 50, uh, go in here to load this one up again, we're back to 50 and it's going to change out this texture, move my model and then load three. And this one we did go through here and change to 35, um, and or Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3. And that way it'll go through and switch. It'll save all those views. You have uh, different projects you can load in here. And what else? I think that's it. I think that's all you really need to know. You can also turn on and off spotlight projection. So if you don't want to paint through, you can. And uh, let's just do this. <clears throat> and again, I'll send you back to his page if that's something that might be useful to you. You absolutely can use that. Now, like I said before, I'm gonna be more eyeballing this. Um, I don't actually need reference for this one because uh, it's, a, it's a bit out there. So for the, in this instance, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, you know what, let's just do this. Append a primitive sphere, and it's already gonna be made a poly mesh 3D. You don't have to hit that button since you're appending a sphere. And I'm just gonna kinda scale this down and 
put this in front. We'll turn on transparent so we know his little face can fit in there. It's going to go, we'll scale this up. Oh, you know what? We'll turn on X symmetry as well, just because I know we'll need to use that later. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball, you know, if this is going to fit. And I want it to go, I guess that's about right. Hold down control shift. We're still in slice curve. Uh, if you need to swap that out, I'm just going to slice where the mass needs to end. Um, hold down control shift. You can change that to slice curve here. And then we'll kind of, we'll just start shaping this. So it's going to be pointier at the bottom, wider at the top, obviously. And in his case, very much wider at the top. And it's going to actually be bigger than his head, at least according to the reference I have. So it's going to kind of poke out quite a bit. There we go. So we've got the mask shape and it's shaped generally to his face. Now I don't need all this extra geometry. So I'm going to control shift tap the green geometry modified to poly delete hidden. We have X symmetry turned on. So zero mesh, we'll just do half this time instead of ty typing in a target polygon count. That slides down to zero nice even quads and we'll zero mesh this. Now interestingly enough on this reference, let me see if I can get a nice big view here. It actually, you see how it kind of, it's almost like this thing was that if I was to model this and it put this kind of distorted geometry holes in there, I'd probably have it sent back. I'd probably, the art director would look at that and go, it looks obviously like you modeled this thing. See this little kind of a pole right here and you go through and you just put little dots on here uh, or extrude or inset. And that's the result you're going to get. Um, or if you have, apply UVs and you do it and then you use your UVs to, you know, tile dot, a dot pattern and then use those to determine where your holes are going to go. That's, you're going to see that's kind of warped and distorted. So it strikes me as something that maybe wasn't, manufact I don't know that manufacturing does that. This looks like a 3D model that was maybe 3D printed. I don't I'm not sure exactly how they made this, but this is what it strikes me as is, I don't. Like if you were manufacturing this, would it be, fl I guess you wouldn't have it flat and then drill holes and then shape it. You would shape it, but then if you go through and machine the holes, I don't know how you would manufacture this. So I probably should stop talking, but this right here is a result of either distorted UVs or, and, or the geometry creating this effect. So the fact that it has it in there, it's kind of easier on me because I'm just going to be doing the same tricks anyway. So lucky me, but I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, I'm assuming it was 3D printed, but it was, uh, as soon as I saw those, I was like, oh, that's, uh, hmm, that's, that's geometry and distorted geometry and UVs. Um, anyway, we got our basic helmet here. Now, like we looked at, you know, it's kind of split from the side and this looks like it kind of tucks up. I'm going to see if I can't find, um, kind of an upshot. Oh, we got, we do got an upshot. Good. Yeah, I'm going to treat these as separate pieces. I think it'll just be easier. So uh, we got the basic overall helmet shape, but it looks like right maybe down the middle. I'm going to go back in with my slice and we're just going to say uh, slice that right about there. Um, we don't need this geometry to match up. You can't go in here to say zero mesh, same, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero and keep the geo the same. You don't have to do that if it's going to be separate pieces of geometry. This is going to be inset a little bit, uh, but if you want to, you can. So control shift tap, split hidden, and then right down the middle, it looks like this is kind of inset here. So I'm going to go ahead and set that geometry up. So again, I'm going to do a nice straight uh, slice here. Actually, let's do, yeah, I guess that'll work. So a nice straight slice here, uh, mirror, mirror and weld, deformation, mirror, geometry, modified topology, mirror and weld. We already went over that earlier. Uh, zero mesh, same, keep groups again, and just get that a geometry here. I think that'll work. Or you know what we need? Let's do this. Control shift tap, control shift S to shrink, control W. And then this will be the outset line here. I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to slice this just a little bit wider. Mirror, mirror, and weld. Control, shift, tap. I'm going to grab this orange and purple. Control, W. And just one more time, zero mesh. Keep groups. 
just to I need I need nice straight lines. I'm gonna inset this line and I'm gonna bump this one out. And then the rest is just gonna be framed, I think. Okay, I think that'll work. So let's go out of transparency mode. We have our top and our bottom. The top should be fairly simple. It's just an extruded face and then it's gonna have a lip. Uh, and you know what? This is where I have to start thinking about how I wanna do this. So uh, again, I don't wanna do spoilers, so I'm gonna grab uh, maybe this one. So now this lip right here is gonna go around and then back up. I have to ask myself, do I wanna keep this all contiguous or do I wanna have this as a separate piece of geometry and just have it sitting on top? Because this is either gonna be a micro poly, a micro mesh, or a nano mesh to get all those holes. Or I'm gonna go through and extrude those faces and I don't necessarily need, again, we're kind of doing another piping trick. I don't need that to be part of this geometry. Technically, yes, it may be, but just for modeling simplicity, I think I'm gonna keep it separate. So, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep, this is gonna be my holes, where my holes are gonna be. And then uh, the piping we're gonna do separately. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this off and we're gonna worry about holes. So now I'm gonna go in here to my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, hover over face, space bar. We're gonna do inset, all polygons, um, each poly. And you know, I'm gonna do legacy, cause that's just gonna pull it in from the sides. I don't really, oops, and that's also gonna solo mode. So now if I do it this way, I can go through here, I can pull in. And again, you're getting that, you know, pinched corner distortion, which is in the reference. So I'm just gonna say we're good to go. And then if I take this, Control Shift Tap, that Polygroup Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden, and then um, Q Mesh, Polygroup All, and pull this out. Oops. You know, that'll get me this result. Then I can hit D for Dynamic, and that'll kind of smooth uh, my mesh, and I can go through and crease all that. However, um, it, it's kind of, I get whatever I get, and also, um, I may want to see what it looks like first before I apply this. So what's a couple different ways we can do that? Uh, one way is I'm gonna go through here and undo. So again, we duplicated this mesh off. So if I wanna replace every single one of these squares with a square with a small hole in it, uh, again, micro poly, micro mesh, or nano mesh. Um, if I was doing something, let me see, like this, where it was like, okay, I wanna keep this all one piece of geometry, but I want these polys to not have holes and these polys to have holes, I would use nano mesh because that way I could uh, select these polygons and say, you don't get nano mesh and then these ones do get nano mesh and I can weld. Since I'm just gonna have these as separate meshes anyways, on the top here at least, I'm just gonna go ahead and use micro poly. So there may be something we can already use. Let's go in here to geometry, turn on dynamic, smooth down to zero, micro poly on, and let's just look. Um, all I'm really looking for is a square with a hole in it. If there's not one, it's, oh, there it is, mesh holes. Um, if there's not one, it's not a huge deal, but there is one, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. And now it's replaced all the squares uh, with holes here. Um, and weld is turned on, so hopefully the micro poly borders weld. And if I go through here and turn on smooth subdiv of one, you're gonna see the holes get smaller. And that's probably closer to what we're looking for. Um, and again, don't yell at me at that distortion. It's literally in the reference. So, um, and I, I think that was geo distortion. I think they literally like did this type of thing and then just 3D printed it or something. Uh, just guessing. So that's one way to do this. And now uh, we have this. So if I go through here and I say apply, uh, all of this should be welded. So if I go through here and again, I'm gonna turn on dynamic, turn off micro poly, and if we do smooth subdiv, yeah, it looks like it holds its shape enough. Um, so that's probably the way I would go about doing this. Now the reason I duplicated it off is so I could go back to our original mesh here and then do the border piping uh, like we did previously. Um, yeah, yeah, that seems right. So, and this is also a little less destructive. So I'm gonna go back through here. So dynamic, Let's undo back to where we had our original. Dynamic, sorry, there we go. So dynamic on and off. And then we'll say, oh, we want dynamic, but you know what? Let's go ahead and smooth subdiv of one. 
Uh, that looks a little bit closer. Great. So now I can just leave that alone for now. I don't need to mess with that until I'm ready to mess with that. And we can, well, hell, you can even add thickness too. So if you turn off dynamic, I'm sorry, turn on dynamic, and then we add thickness. You can even put in uh, a little bit of preview thickness, although that thickness is going to inherit holes on the side. So, eh, I'm probably going to leave that alone. So, we got our holes going. And so now we're going to alt tap this head here. And again, uh, I want to do that piping. Now, like we did before, I can go in here with my Z modeler brush, Q mesh, poly group ball, pull this out. We have a new poly group here. I'm going to go ahead and go into, I'll show you where it is first. Once, <laughs> I'm going here to poly group. Uh, group by normals and then do again modify geometry modified topology mirror and weld so now i can get this blue and this green so now i can go through here i get the q mesh uh, poly group all and i can pull this back and i can pull this back and get you know straight results and then i can you know pull back that one however depending on how you modeled this you know if you modeled this to be the outer bound as opposed to yeah just pull a little bit back and you know make make a little thing here you know one thing you could do is instead of let's undo back where we just had the flat plane here you could literally go back in here and say slice it's like you know what this is my outer bound so I need to keep that somewhat intact and in fact that that edge loop in there is probably fine and then this one see how the edge ring kind of goes goes whoop uh, I'm gonna slice straight across here so now I get this result and then you can Z remesh this. However, what I'm probably gonna do is this geometry will provide me, if I go through here, so Q mesh polygroup all, polygroup all out. Um, this will provide me a nice straight uh, polygroup, I think. So again, um, we can just you know polygroup this entire corner here. So that'll keep it nice and sharp. I'm not gonna pull out a huge amount. I'm gonna go through here and Q mesh polygroup all on the purple and just pull back, oh, let's say polygroup island. And then I'm going to pull back, boop, that'll just get rid of it. And now I have uh, my piping. However, I now I need to pull this piping out, right? So again, uh, group by normals, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. And then Q mesh, hold down shift and just pull this island forward. And then go down here and just hold down shift, pull this island forward. And if I want to thicken it from the back, pull this island out and pull this island out. There we go. So now we've got our piping, we've got our mesh and everybody's happy so now this one gets a little bit trickier like i said not really but if you want to keep this all one contiguous mesh you can use instead of micro poly you can use nano mesh and just use that same you know here's a mesh with a hole cut in the middle replace all of these poly groups but not these ones because i want these to be nice smooth plastic again for ease of modeling what i'm going to do is number one i'm actually going to go through here real quickly and just scale this in and scale this in because i want this to kind of fit up underneath here so i'm gonna give myself a little bit of wiggle room um and i'm going to assume okay this just tucks up underneath i don't really see but i'm going to assume that there's piping that goes up and over as well um so not a huge deal i can you know, that'll be interesting so i'm gonna hold down Control shift isolate the green split that off and like we did before let me see, do I have a, and it doesn't, oh, I'm not going to really see it that much. I want to say they meet up. They're, they're pretty flush. Hmm. So I'm going to undo that. And since I split the other one off, I'm, so I don't get confused, I'm going to take this one and delete it. I'm actually going to, you know what, I'm not going to overthink it. I can move stuff around. So. I'm going to scale this down just a little bit here again so the green kind of fits up underneath. Control shift tap the green, geometry modified topology split hidden. We'll go back into dynamic, smooth subdiv of one since we already know that's probably going to work for this geo density. Uh, micro poly on, select the mesh holes here. Oops, smooth subdiv of one. There we go. So now we have our holes. And then now we're going to go with, oh, and if, if it starts shrinking from here i think if you go in here and hit crease that'll go ahead and crease those open border edges and that'll keep it a little bit more flush just if that's interesting to you so now we got this middle section here 
and we got this outer section. However, this outer section, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this off. You may be thinking, oh, you have holes on it now. Not really. Uh, that's just gonna be stored in the geometry dynamic subdiv. So just turn that off, and now we're back to just geometry. So I can use that for my borders. Um, now we've already got this middle thing kind of set up for the, the border stuff I'm gonna do. So it's like, you know, it comes down, it kind of insets in, it's still a solid piece though, and then it meets up with this poly border. So let's see if I can't do that. So like we did before, and you know, it might be easier just to ignore this. We'll see, I'm gonna turn that off temporarily. So we've got our green here and we need to put in our piping, correct? So, uh, and that's our duplicate. Okay, I think we're good. So, uh, like I did before, Q mesh, poly group on all, hold down space bar with hovering over face of the Z model brush, pull this out. There you go, it'll be nice and snug underneath here. If you wanna make it thicker on the inside, just go into solo mode, start pulling this poly group and then tap shift. That'll pull along the surface normal, but I think we're okay. Um, so now I've got those nice borders. Right, we got that pink polygroup border. So if I go through here and say Q mesh all this, that'll be fine. Be a little bit careful because as these start to meet up in the middle with Q mesh, they'll start to stick. They'll kind of stick together, although in this case, they're really not. Hmm. But anyway, so we'll pull out uh, that, that piping border here. And I think that gets us pretty dang close. Good enough. Um, and I'm gonna move all these other pieces together. So I'm not worried about it overlapping because I can I can adjust that. Uh, the only thing is this kind of comes in and then uh, loops around. So I'll figure that out. So again, we can go ahead and say Q mesh poly group will do. So here's the other thing too. As I pull this out, for some reason, it's keeping two purple poly groups. I don't really want that. So as I'm pulling out, I'm gonna tap alt just to give myself brand new poly groups here. There we go. So now, uh, we've got our border, we don't need this. This is gonna be holes, so Q mesh polygroup all, and then we can pull this back. And that time we didn't have to do polygroup island because we made these different polygroups here. So now we've got our border, our holes, and now I just need to do this little end set piece. And that's what this was originally going to be. Um, but you know what, I think I can use just this pre-existing geometry we have. So I'm gonna alt tap this. If you alt tap in ZBrush, you can select any geometry. And let's see if I can figure this out. I think the easiest way is to do a group by normals. And that's just based on an angle threshold. So you're gonna see it gives me nice poly groups on every single major edge change, angle change. And then I'm gonna do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the X. So now I've got these edges here. I'm gonna try this. Let's say Q mesh poly group ball. I'm gonna pull this to the middle and see, there we go. It'll kind of stick together, but oh, it doesn't quite grab them all. Um, I can weld those together. It's not a huge deal. Um, but I'm trying to think if there's something else, I, another construction method I want to use. And I'm streaming, so I can't do my usual stare at the screen for minutes at a time. All right, let's just move forward. So I'm going to go ahead, hold down Control Shift. I'm going to grab all these little sliver pieces of geometry here. Control Shift, drag, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And I'm gonna see if I can't go in here to weld points and just crank up that weld distance and weld all those together. Ooh, maybe not that much. There we go. Weld all those together. Make sure I didn't unintentionally do something weird. And I'm gonna say, um, uncrease all. That's gonna be under your geometry crease menu. Just uncrease all. Um, that worked okay. Now what we could do, let's go in here to Insert single edge loop hover over an edge with your model brush. Hold down Alt to get rid of that, and then geometry modified topology mirrored weld. That'll get rid of that kind of pointy thing that was on there. Uh, that pointy result. So now what I need to do is I need to move this back a little bit. So we've got the piping border. However, it kind of goes in, but it's still a contiguous. Oh, there's holes back there. Damn. Okay, we can fix that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this, let's do this. Control shift, <laughs> study your reference first. You want your modified topology, delete hidden. I'm gonna go into, um, I have a brush already set up for this. If I hit B, you're gonna see I have ZM slice 
uh, that I can switch to, but just for instructional purposes. I'm gonna go in here to the point action. I'm gonna say uh, slice mesh, edge action. Ah, you know what? I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this on move. I can go in here and set this to slice mesh. Hover over an edge, set that to slice uh, mesh. And then I can hover over a polygon and I can say do nothing. Or I can do that with a Z model brush, save that out, put it in my brush presets, and then just grab ZM slice so I don't have to mess with my normal Z model brush. I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna slice across here, and again, uncrease all. And then, uh, you know what, let's go through here. Let's hover over this edge, and we're gonna do a split edge here, and then we're gonna say delete edge, U and U. Because basically what I wanna do, I'm gonna hold down Alt, and then hold tap Shift to just paint across here, because I want this purple one to be the one that extrudes in. Because that's, that's the way it has to go. And then this purple is actually, um, oh, that's gonna be interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this little top piece here, delete hidden, and this little back piece here. Let's do a quick group by normals. Isolate just the pink, control shift drag to invert that, delete hidden, delete hidden. So now we just have, the blue. Sorry, this is getting a little bit off the rails, but I didn't I didn't look at my reference enough. So we've got this here, and honestly, this piece here is just gonna have holes in the back. Oh, let's get rid of it. Delete hidden. This actually would have been a lot easier to do a different way. But Q mesh poly group all. I'm just gonna Q mesh these back, and you see when we Q mesh back, it flips my normals. Easily fixed. Display properties flip. And that'll work. And then again, there's actual, if you zoom way in there, the holes go all the way across. So um, I can merge these together and extrude them. Luckily, what I did, uh, I can actually probably go back in one of these and find the history where it is just one contiguous mesh all the way across. But let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna do Shift D to turn off, um, turn off what? Turn off. Uh, dynamic that we had on. I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say uh, Q mesh polygroup all. Uh, I guess I guess you know I could do, just extrude. I'll just keep it simple. I'm going to say extrude edge loop. Tap Alt once. So I'm just going to extrude these edges. I'm just going to make them meet in the middle. And then again, I'm going to get rid of insert single edge loop. Get rid of this line and then do a quick mirror and weld and the, even this geometry out. Insert single edge loop right down here, and then we'll do an uncrease all. So that way, you could also use Z-Modeler, but that'll work. So now this is all one contiguous mesh. We can hit D for dynamic, turn all the holes back on, and now this will be recessed, and uh, there will be holes all the way across, which I didn't realize was the case. Uh, actually, I did kind of mess up here, but it's easily fixed. This needs to go all the way across, no big deal. I can say Q-Mesh Polygroup All, just Tap Alt to mark this one, and then just, uh, let's do this. Over a face, bridge, two polys, U to U, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld, and then probably, if I'm guessing, probably across the top as well. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm gonna guess that's correct. There we go, so we got like this little fencing mask, 3D printed uh, fencing mask. So now, I need to move these uh, pieces together uh, but and also I can go in here to say you know move multiple just take this little stack icon and turn it to multiple control shift drag over multiple pieces and I can move scale and rotate them together um, D, there we go. Uh, however if you needed to go in here and like use the move brush if you need to do some weirdo moving uh, what you need to do is temporarily merge them together and then go through and move them. I think we can probably get away with using move multiple. So again, uh, control shift drag to unselect all these, turn on move multiple, control shift drag over these two. You can modify your pivot where it needs to go. And we can kind of scale this down, move it out, rotate it down even a little bit maybe. Have this so it just tucks underneath, meets up here. Maybe scales not uniformly in just a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off move multiple. That'll work. Now this this holes 
thing, if I do Shift D, let's go ahead and do another uh, crease. So we crease those open edges so those edges will stay a little bit more out. Whew, okay. That'll work. So we've got the mask. I think the head projection, we could do that with poly paint. Uh, we can all just do that in Keyshot if we wanna go in and render this out. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. It's been a while since I looked at the chat. Everybody still good? Mm. David, excellent. I'm glad that UI button shrinking was able to get you access to that explode button. Um, uh, opinion about what best way to study anatomy? Ah, uh, yay, yay. That's a good question. We have previously, let me do that. Uh, stream Pavlovich workshop. So am I, I do two different streams. I do this Pixelogic stream on first Tuesday of every month. And then the first Thursday of every month, I do my stream. If you go down here to the big blue genie, this is all the live streams here previously. So I'll go ahead and link you here. And then also on the Pavlovich workshop, um, they haven't updated this with my latest one, but um, this one, I think, the zombies one, we actually go into quite a bit of um, anatomy stuff. So this one, I probably do answer that question a little more in full, but um, I can also have, if you want to look at my bookshelf, I can grab that for you real quick. So we'll do Google Drive here. Share, get link, anyone can view it here. And it's basically here, this thing. So you can go through here. There's, I think this middle section here has most of my anatomy, uh, this middle section here has most of my anatomy books. Um, but yeah, I can't tell you the best way to study anatomy. Uh, for me, everybody learns so differently. Some people can just look at a abridgment book and go, oh my God, I totally get it. I know everything in the world. And then they're an awesome comic book artist. Uh, not me. So uh, let's see here. Coming back up. Waiting now for the US version to mess it up. <laughs> I did watch it undubbed. Uh, much, much better. The actors are amazing. Um, not the American voice actors necessarily. But um, the actor actors, I'm again, no spoilers, but really, really good. Uh, treadmill screen that has holes like this, very odd. I wonder if it is like you do manufacture it the same way and it just builds in that geo distortion. I mean, I, I could, they could have manufactured it. I really don't know. Um, wouldn't be easier to do this in Blender or Maya. Not for me. Um, I do have a problem with this painter. Um, I mean, this, if it was just me not recording and explaining what I'm doing, this also would have been like 10 minutes of work, but also this is non-destructive. Again, I can go back here and I can, I, nothing's extruded. I didn't poke holes in here. I can change the mesh size if I need to. In Maya, I would, I think it would have to commit. I would have to go through and be like, okay, I'm going to extrude these. I hope they're right. And I'd maybe save a version off, you know, but you know, in here, it's faster for me in here for sure. Maya would take me longer. Um, you could also do this in the texture. So if you don't need it to be part of your model, like you're not going to 3D print it, you know, you can have UVs and you can use surface noise or you can use a texture with alpha to uh, achieve this too. It'd be, it'd be even less destructive that you can change the whole size in your texture as opposed to modeling it in. Uh, new techniques for confiscating ZBrush or it stay the same even with all the new ZBrush features? Um, I always approach uh, a problem of like, hey, here's what I'm trying to make. And if something pops in my mind, that's like, oh, you know what? This would be a useful technique, you know? And for everybody new, you know, I always do these uh, intro to ZBrush, what's new? So here's ZBrush 2021.7, what's new? Uh, so 84 through 91 is all the ZBrush 2021.7 features. Um, if something jumps out at me in my brain, since I know all the new features, um, and you do too, since they're all right there, um, it's just, you kind of store it in the back of your head like, Oh, while I'm concepting, oh, you know, it'd be easy and non-destructive, you know, doing this method. Um, so I can't think of anything off the top of my head that was like, oh my gosh, I now do this all the time because I don't really do a ton of concept sketching anymore, but. Uh, new techniques for concept sketching ZBrush? Not really. Um, maybe, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head necessarily. 
uh, for proving and improving proportions, uh, well, you can use uh, reference. Uh, did you get my email about the summit? Damn, do I always miss your emails or something? I don't think so. Oh, I'll, I'll, I can go back and check. Um, solve the problem with distortion if you wanted. Retopology. Probably, hmm. That's an interesting one because if I was to go through and UV this on the texture and use my UV map, I'd probably still get, it wouldn't be perfect. Um, you could use like a triplanar, but then it would kind of blur along there. I'm not sure exactly how I would fix that perfectly. It'd be, it may be some manual work. Go in here, get as even quads as I can, or maybe, you know what I'd probably do that may or may not work? do a plane that has even quads and then wrap that plane. I guess I can show you. So if I'd go through here and do maybe a plane, X symmetry, let me see shift D. There we go. Sorry. Split mass points. Turn my holes back on. So in this case here, uh, I'm going to turn on a little bit of thickness. And then, um, I can kind of see it and I'm going to turn off my poly. So here's my plane like so. And I guess we'll go ahead and stretch this out, stretch this out. Same thing if as I was doing like chain mail or something is it may be easier or you're wrapping something to go through here and say, okay, here's my plane. I'm going to go through, you know, let's do this. Uh, insert single edge loop, alt mirror and weld. I'm going to say insert multiple edge loops. I'm going to put one right down the middle. And then one down the middle. I just I just want to divide this equally up, and I'm going to go through here and say uh, crease my edges. Hit Control D with dynamic or smooth off. Delete lower. So now you can see the the geometry I'm getting. And then you can go through here and you can maybe try, I don't know, bend curve or bend arc uh, to go through here. And again, we'll turn on the thickness so we can see it. And we'll just try to go through and pull, oops, pull this back to kind of match. In this case, bend curve would probably be your better bet. Um, what am I looking for? A side corner, this one. Oh, there it is. So kind of go through and just get that overall bend. To it here. Actually, you can probably just do this entire front face here. So now, if I turn off dynamic, pretty even quads. Um, and it, the thing is, you don't want to go through and slice in zero mesh because zero mesh is going to look at this geometry and go, oh, let me let me fix it for you. I don't want it to be fixed. I want this to now be something like this. But I would go through here and I would try and hide this geometry. You know, it's like, okay, I don't need uh, geometry is going to be hmm, as soon as you slice, it's going to introduce some weirdness. But if you can hide that weirdness underneath piping like this, you'd probably be in good shape. So if you're going to do chain mail, and you don't want to rely on z remesher, you know, you can try and wrap really clean geometry and get more evenly distributed geo and not have that uh, distortion in, the, in kind of the poles there. Uh, any 3D printing work or no any good resource for learning 3D printing? Um, God, I have some notes, but I've not successfully 3D printed anything. I've just been gathering dust in the back. Um, Uncle Jesse has some good stuff that I, I was kind of looking at, but off the top of my head, I can't think of a ton. Let me just pull up my notes. Oh no, Twitch crashed. Well, this will be backed up on YouTube on my channel at Pixelogics too, so. It had male proportions said he could be used as color pickers for poly paint. Um, Oh, um, I do have a tool here that I use for um, assigning material IDs, the simple color swatches. So I go through here and I just kind of move this into place, go out of edit mode, and then drag in my other meshes. And then I can hold down, I can tap C to select these colors. I have this, 
Um, but this isn't really head height, although, God, maybe I could, I'll do a version of that that does have head height. Um, I want to say on my YouTube channel, let me see if I can just type in proportions. So when in doubt, if I need to find something. Because you can also use the transpose line to, to do proportions as well. Body block out anatomy. This might be a good one too. So I bet, I bet some of these live streams I cover that. But we were talking about that swatch. So we'll go in here to uh, simple color swatch, share, get link, copy link, done. So if you take that Z tool and you put it into your um, ZBrush 2021 Z tools folder, see program files, pixel like ZBrush 2021 Z tools, throw it in here. You'll have easy access to it. If you hit the comma key, go in here to tool and just double click that. Uh, yeah, it's on YouTube. Cool. All right, so where are we at? Let's go ahead and grab white color here, control M. So now we just need to do a quick hoodie. Now, looking again at my reference, I'm not gonna show you this because it could be, I guess, spoilery in a way. Um, there's a jacket component. So this is the, this is kind of a, a fabric, black fabric head. And then on top of this is a, um, like a hoodie. And he actually has shoulders. So I'm gonna alt tap his original head in the middle here. I'm gonna duplicate this off just cause I like to always have duplicates. I'm gonna go into my move, uh, snake look, B S A B S H. Oh, Sculptors Pro, okay. Snake hook, turn on Sculptors Pro. And now with X symmetry turned on, I can kind of just pull out a little bit of shoulders, a little bit of chest, we'll do a bust. Now you could use, use, use Dynamesh too, you can just pull out um, move brush and Dynamesh is already turned on for this head, um, but you can also use Sculptures Pro. Um, interestingly enough, you can hold down shift to smooth and you can get rid of entire sections here. You can also hold down shift to smooth and let go of shift and it'll inflate when you're using Sculptures Pro. So there's that. So we've got our little chest and shoulders pulled out here. You can even just use the inflate brush. Turn off Sculptures Pro here. Uh, that's easier. There we go. So we'll use this as our jacket base. And this one um, doesn't have Dynamesh turned on when I duplicated it. So we'll go ahead and turn Dynamesh on. There we go. Oh, and by the way, geometry, Dynamesh is where you wanna be. So now we've got this information. Now I need to just do a, a jacket here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna block out the jacket mesh. I'm gonna go into my clay buildup brush. So B, C, somewhere in there is clay buildup. And then we're gonna say, okay, this is where the neck goes. Again, I'm trying, I got my references all over the place here. I need to organize it better. Oh, there it is. Organize it better on my screen. So it kind of goes up. And I can use my Damien standard brush, hold down Alt and kind of pull up our ridge. And then again, clay build up. So he's got, it's, the jacket's got kind of a turtleneck little thing built in like this. And then again, Damien standard brush to kind of cut in. There we go. So that's the bottom part of the jacket. Now it is gonna have a hoodie. I'm gonna do that as a separate piece, but this is just basically attached um, to shoulders. Like so. So here the neck goes up and then this hoodie is kind of attached around the side and goes up and over. So you know what? I'm gonna call this the bottom portion of the jacket and we're not cheating or anything the, the hood literally is sewn in separately so I can use that as an excuse to set, keep it as a separate geometry. Go into solo mode here control shift we're going to go in here to knife curve and we're just going to slice off this entire top part here. If you, if you haven't used knife curve yet it is amazing no need to use trim now for any reason that I can think of. Um, maybe one but I, I can't imagine. Um, so this will be our, again, our bottom part of our jacket here. Oops. Oh, and if you're sculpting through and you're like, hey, everything's great. And then you control drag and, um, you know, you get those little webby kind of results. That's because you're pulling through the other side. Um, turn on back face masking. 
that's going to be under your brush auto masking backface I have that assigned to a hotkey alt F so now and this is just an indicator so I don't even need to be looking at this I have backface mask button right there and my custom UI so as I'm tabbing alt F I can see if that face masking is turned on so that way it'll leave alone anything your camera can't see very useful so now got the bottom part of our jacket here now I need the top part one more time I'm gonna grab the original head here we're gonna duplicate this off and I'm just gonna go through here and we're gonna block out where this hood's gonna go and again I was kind of using this as a guide you know it kind of goes around the head and then back and then tucks down outside of the head here and just I'm just uh, dynameshing as I go here just turn on dynamesh again geometry dynamesh I'm just pulling this geometry out and if you want to do it I suppose you know what hold on smooth modifiers yeah there's way to smooth mode I'm gonna drop that intensity down it seems like it's very very dense if you're ever struggling with your geometry drop the geometry resolution down and then if you're at a high-res dynamesh and you're like oh, I'm still struggling with this geo um, Ziri mesh it, project the details back, and then uh, you'll have subdivision history so you're not struggling with geo. That's probably the, one of the biggest things that I see day to day for ZBrush, new ZBrush users, is struggling with high res geo and getting lumpy results. Uh, that's a couple different ways around that. So we have this hoodie, and it's going to kind of pull to a corner so it kind of goes up here it actually kind of pulls tight it's kind of a, a weird not weird I suppose it's manufactured like this for a reason so you don't see inside of it but it kind of pulls tight in here it's not like a big open like uh, who's the guy with the scythe death it's not like a big loose hood or anything like that it's actually a pretty tight cinched hood here I'm actually using move Accus. that's a move brush with AccuCurve turned on so you can pull two corners a little bit better. So it's something like, something a little bit more like this. So it pulls to a corner and then up and around like so. There we go. And then here, God, these, the guys, the proportions on this demo anime head are a little bit, sorry. A little bit out there so it's not hopefully it gets across very heart-shaped head and then on the back this kind of goes out I'm gonna switch to my standard brush here this kind of goes out and kind of bunches in the back and then it's got like a little bit of a elf kind of look here something like this now I'm not worried too much about clothes cloth sculpting or anything like that I'm just getting the volumes that we need that are appropriate because we're going to zero mesh this and then use cloth dynamics to get what we need here. I'll pull this hood forward just a bit. So it looks like on a lot of these, I guess it depends on what's going on in the scene. Sometimes the hood is like kind of covers and then sometimes it's like pulled way back. So I'm just going to go with what. Maybe it looks a little more ominous. So here's the edge. I'm just kind of indicating where the edge is going to go. And then here's the top part here. Good enough. Uh, and now at this point, if I if I need more resolution, I can go back in my Dynamesh, crank that resolution up a little bit. But again, I'm just going to try to avoid fighting with the geometry. And also I can go in here to H Polish and the Move Brush and just kind of Sit this hoodie maybe where it needs to go. Okay, so we've got some cloth going, or at least the bounds of where I want my cloth to be. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and extract this off. So, or you don't even have to extract; just whatever method is best for you. Go through here. Oh, yeah, we'll use we'll use this control drag lasso. And again, we're going to mask where the bounds are. We'll clean this up. Hold down control and go back to mask pin. Let's turn off line so we can see a little bit better. Hold down control alt. 
And also you can control alt tap to sharpen that up or you can go down here to masking and you can say, you know, sharpen blur or whatever you want, but control tap to blur, control alt tap to sharpen on your mesh. It's a little bit faster. Okay, so again, we're searching for those cloth border bounds that we're looking for here. Something like this. There's all my cloth that I want. Uh, maybe a little bit more. And again, we can pull this geometry around a little bit. It's not a huge deal. Wink. Good enough. Um, now again, I can go through here and turn my line back on. I can't hit Control W. It'll just give me that nasty line I need to clean up. Sometimes what can help is again going into the geometry which we did earlier edge loop mass border and that'll slice a line through your mask it's not perfect uh, but it's a little bit cleaner geometry modify topology delete hidden so now we have the bottom part and the interior part uh, here and actually on a normal human being where their head isn't massive compared to their neck this area gets filled out a little bit more i can kind of fudge it a little maybe but Leave that alone for now. Um, so now, if I zero mesh half, depth size down to zero, that's under geometry, zero mesh. That's a result I'll get. If you want to clean that line up a little bit more, we'll go back to what we did earlier, which is masking, mask, our open border. You can even grow it, that mask a little bit if you want. Control tab to invert, and then deformation, polished by features, open circle. I'll clean that up, and then zero mesh half. Half, half. There we go. So now we've got some cloth kind of going. Actually, let's stick this down here. We're kind of warping our geometry a little bit, but no big deal. You can go zero mesh same or zero mesh half. I think that might work. So we got some cloth going. Now, um, I think I'm going to work on just a single layer of geometry. I don't generally like to work that way in ZBrush, but I think when I'm using cloth, that might be the better bet. So we're going to go in here to dynamics and uh, we can simulate this. So if we go through here and we say, okay, everything on my screen, other than what I have selected, um, set that as collision. So uh, turn on collision volume, turn inflate down just a bit. If I run the simulation, it'll kind of stick to stuff and fall. Um, in this case though, I don't necessarily need it to, I know where his head is, so I don't need it to collide on his head. And it's actually a pretty thick fabric as well. So I can probably skip the whole simulating part. I don't know it's gonna be that useful for it to me. However, so I'll turn collision volume off. However, uh, it is good to go through here and change the firmness of the uh, geometry. Just a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go down here to geometry crease. And we're gonna crease our open border edge. So if I hit control D, it'll maintain that border a little bit easier. So now at this point, if I go in here to just start sculpting, um, you know, you can go through here and you can just start sculpting your mesh. You know, if you're just doing cloth, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You can look at your reference. And if you got decent reference like I do um, from the actual show, uh, you don't need to worry about back face masking on this one because there is no back faces on there. Um, yeah, you can just go through here and kind of match, you know, the the folds and the wrinkles uh, that you have in your ref there. So we'll go through here. And then if I need more geometry, control D. So I'm using actual subdivisions. I want to keep my geometry nice. I don't want to use DynaMesh. Uh, but then I can go back down a subdivision and work on like the bigger forms, which is nice. And then I can go up a subdivision. I can work on smaller forms like so. So best of both worlds. Now, I do want to use cloth simulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my pinch brush. And uh, you know you can use a pinch brush to kind of pinch geometry. But for any brush, you can go down into your brush settings and underneath elasticity, crank up simulation iterations. So that way, oops, sorry. Um, go back to our pinch brush. Simulation generations up to 100. And now as I'm, sim as I'm pinching, it'll simulate uh, the geometry. So that's just a way you can kind of go through. And if it's simulating too much, getting too many wrinkles, and it's on a thicker fabric, you can either go up here to firmness and crank that up. So it's giving you not bigger wrinkles, or you can go down in subdivision history and just kind of modify, you know, the big, the big forms here. Or both, you know, sometimes it's useful to kind of use both here. 
And you don't have to use pinch, you can use whatever you want. There's even cloth brushes, BC, and there's cloth brushes in here. I just tend to use pinch to kind of drive the folds here. Oh, you know what? It does have, eh, just like we did on the interior of the head where it's two separate pieces of cloth, it does look like it's stitched down the middle, but I think we can just add that. Same thing along the side here. I, I'm just gonna add that. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. We'll just sculpt that detail in. So we'll go up a subdivision level. We're getting we're on firmness of three. And we'll go through here with our pinch brush. And we're just gonna use the volumes that we've already sculpted and then use this pinch brush. Hold down shift and turn down my Z intensity a bit to kind of go in and dial in a little bit of those cloth folds, like so. Uh, same thing for the body here. I'll tap this real quick. And, you know, let's go to the side. Go here to clay build up. Go here to H polish. I'm just trying to determine where the bounds of this thing are. So. I already have this top sliced off. I'm going to go ahead and slice off with the knife curve brush the bottom. And then we're just going to take this and then say geometry modified topology, delete hidden. There's control shift tap this. Uh, we'll clean up this top border here. Um, one kind of easy way to do that is just to slice it instead of going in and masking like we we're doing earlier. And then zero mesh or half, tap size down to zero. And this will give us. Our, our cloth. Now, it actually has a space in here for a zipper. Um, I guess I can slice that in. Slice curve, hold down space bar, grab B brush radius, and that'll slice in uh, a radius for the zipper here. However, it's going to do it on the front and the back. So, Control Shift tap the purple, do uh, auto groups underneath your polygroups menu, and then now, oh, yeah, is it both yellow? It looks like it's the same polygroup. That's orange and yellow. It's kind of hard to tell, but we'll take the brown and the white. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. And now we've got a space in here that we can fill in with a zipper or a, a, a something else later. So zero mesh half. And this will be the top of our part of our jacket. And again, we can add thickness uh, later, I believe. Although. On the back here, we do need to extrude, oops, uh, extrude edge loop. There we go. And then mirror and weld, if that doesn't work, mirror across the x-axis, mirror and weld. And then we'll go in here and we'll do a quick, that's weird, sorry, uh, extrude. Making sure those are all welded up there. Oh, come on. Ay, ay, ay. Come on, come on. Delete hidden. Very well. There we go. Sorry about that. So now we have this bottom cloth here. Uh, we can add thickness or cap that hole up top. Um, and again, I'm probably making this a little bit more complicated, thank you, than it needs to be. Because uh, again, I can just sculpt that in, you know, and then add a zipper in there and then cap this and not have to worry about all that. Um, that seems a lot more worthwhile to me. So I'm just going to go back. You can, you can mess with that and add more geometry, kind of like we did with this up here. It just sounds like a nightmare. So go through here. I'm going to say close, convex hole, control shift tap, make that all one poly group here. We'll do the same thing for the bottom here. And then, uh, you know what? Let's give this a little bit more geometry. Insert multiple edge loops. There we go. And uh, I guess the same thing for the bottom. So now we've got uh, clothing mesh. And, you know, one more time, we'll go through here and we'll start 
uh, sculpting. We don't have subdivision history just yet. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn off X symmetry because this isn't going to be perfectly symmetrical. And we'll just start basically where the hood comes down. There will be a little, this will be kind of sewn in there. We'll hit Control D to subdivide. This will kind of cut across here. And like I said before, just down the middle, we can go through here with our clay buildup brush and literally just drop in a little divot for that zipper to fit in eventually. Good enough. Don't overthink it like I do. So one more time. We'll go through here and we'll kind of sculpt out this geo. We can raise this up a little bit. We'll turn on, we can tap X to turn X symmetry back on if we want to kind of modify this. I'm going to pull this neck up in the back. There we go. Turn off X symmetry. And then again, just go back into that pinch brush here and kind of wrinkle this up. Control D to subdivide one more time. This will give you more geometry here, um, which may or not be useful. But now that you have subdivision history, you can standard brush, kind of go through here, and then pinch brush to kind of go through and get some dynamic wrinkles going. Just a bit here. Now, one thing we're not doing, and let's go ahead and firm this up to four. And smooth. So, one thing we're not doing is adding thickness to this geometry just yet. Um, just when I'm being dynamic with my cloth, uh, it's just a little bit easier for me. There is a way to go through here and underneath dynamic subdiv, um, if I turn this on, um, you can add thickness to this. We're going to say offset negative 100 so the thickness all goes in. And then as we're adding thickness, you can go through here and you can add uh, segments in here so you can uh, subdivide back down through. I'll show you the manual way to do that as well because sometimes it's a little bit easier. You don't have to do any math. So this is looking good. Turn on post sub D and then hit apply. So that way we just have one line of thickness in here. And then I'm going to go into solo mode here. Control shift tap the purple. Okay, good. It looks like it's the same mesh, but it's not. So we have inside, outside, and side polygroup here. So if I do want to go through here and say, you know what, I want to make this a little bit thicker, we can say uh, extrude polygroup island or polygroup all in this case. Tap, hold down shift and just pull in uh, more thickness as needed. Um, now we do want to get our subdivision history back, right? But if I hit reconstruct, because this is all one line, it's not going to reconstruct. However, I can go insert single edge loop. We can go one subdivision, two subdivisions, three subdivisions, and then boop, 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 subdivide all the way back to our original here. So, and basically all that was, was literally going in here. The first one I put down in the middle is one. I put one down the middle of each of those, two. Put one down the middle of each of those, three. Uh, so that way you can get your subdivision level history back, all your details back, uh, and you're good to go. So now this out here is a little bit harsh. So I'm gonna go through here and we'll kind of soften that up just a bit. Like so, and then this is where I was talking about there's um there's kind of cuts and creases along here so let's do this one first you can go through here and you can kind of just use your your modeling skills with maybe a little bit of your lazy mouse that's underneath stroke lazy mouse here with your damien standard brush or uh, there's a damien standard o2 you can download from the internet 
we can use this one as well to kind of go through and cut. Let's control D to subdivide here. And let's also crank up, turn on the lazy radius for this one. That'll give you a little bit of a cleaner cut here. There is ways you can go through and you can mask, like you can put a poly group through here and then you can invert it. Um, if you do a search on my YouTube channel for like, I don't know, t-shirt seams, you can probably find that. But I think for this, instead of being all cutesy with our, with our uh, elegant solutions, I'm just gonna try a little brute force. Sometimes, you know, you can go down that path of like, eh, I'm gonna do it this way and it's 45 steps, but it'll give you a really blah, blah, blah. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can be like, you know what, just grab your clay brush, save yourself some time. Uh, okay, and then the other thing too, if you want to, you can go back in here and you can pinch. Remember you do have, um, now we're over the active point threshold. So if I go through here and pinch, it's not gonna simulate. You can hide pieces of the mesh to get you under that active threshold. And if we go down here to like firmness of two again, you can go through here and you can pinch and get cloth. Or if you just want to really pinch, just go down here to simulation iterations, turn that off. So that way you can literally just go in and pinch something instead of simulating it. There we go. And then one more time back down the head. I guess it looks like it's, you know, all the way ish. Now there is going to be puckering along the corners here. Uh, we can use simulation for that, but I'm going to use an alpha first. Let's see if I can just do that quickly. Any seams on the jacket I need to worry about? I guess that seam there is kind of built in. We can make this look a little bit more clothy. All right. We got our cutesy little head. I'm gonna fudge this. I can I can move all the masks out, but I'm just gonna kind of push that back underneath here. Same with this and this. So now uh, the zipper we kind of just ignored. No big deal. I'm gonna duplicate this off. Go into a polyframe here. We'll say delete lower, control shift tab, just the blue. Uh, and we did originally a slice curve, hold down space bar with a brush radius. If you don't wanna deal with that, uh, you can go in here without the brush radius and you can literally just slice one side. And then again, deformation mirror, geometry modified topology mirror and weld. Control shift tap the blue, do auto groups underneath your polygroups menu. And now you have a piece of geometry kind of sitting where you want it. Turn on X symmetry, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. And that'll give you nice even quads that kind of just, you know, go down the geometry. If we can simplify this too, insert single edge loop, hold down alt, you can go through here. Let's get rid of this middle one here. And mirror weld. So now, nice straight thing. Now, you may be thinking these actually look like zippers, but they're kind of not. It's just like a piece of fabric with a little little zipper hanging out the top. So it's got like a little lining that keeps the zipper, interlocking zippers safe. Now there is brush insert, BI insert curve, I think. No, I think it's actually a zipper. B, I, there we go, zipper. So there's metal and there's plastic. Um, you can literally go through here and, you know, pull out a zipper. So let's turn off the X symmetry here. So you can go through here and you can like frame your mesh and put a zipper in there. But really all I need is that top part. So because of that, let's go into stroke. And I'm just gonna turn off curve mode for this. And I think it's a metal zipper. So we'll go back in here to our metal zipper. Again, turn off curve mode. And now I can just pull out that. We'll say split mass points underneath your subtool split menu. And all I need, let's do auto groups. Control shift tab, go to select. I'm gonna grab this, 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 this. Oops. Or you can just grab all the top pieces, Control Shift A, and then grab this little front piece, delete hidden. 
So now that's really all I needed out of there. Yoink, we have that hanging. Let's go ahead and move our pivot, hold down Alt to move our pivot up to the top. So we got this here, and then we got an extra piece of fabric here. Let's go ahead and give ourselves some thickness. So we'll say Q mesh, polygroup all, pull this out. And if you want to smooth this out, but keep the corners sharp, again, like we were doing earlier, go into your geometry crease options, and we're going to say crease tolerance, and I'll somewhere around 61. And then we can go in here to polish by features, and that'll kind of smooth this out, but keep your corners creased because your crease tolerance picked those corners up. Cool, huh? So now we got this. If we want to sharpen this up a little bit, we'll hit Control D, and then we'll go through here. Let's turn off that zipper temporarily. So just alt tap that and then turn the eyeball off and alt tap the jacket. And again, we'll go back in here with our Damien standard brush. We'll turn on X symmetry and we'll just kind of clean this up just a tad. Go in here with our move brush. Again, you could get into like rebuilding stuff and just in general going nuts with technique and making stuff. But at the end of the day, Sometimes, especially on like organic stuff, brute force is the way to go. So we'll go ahead and pull this down here and turn on X symmetry. And again, in the show, this is like way tucked up underneath the chin, but I think we can get away with that. So, all right, we got everything we need. Everybody good? This back here, we would do, we would, I guess we could just do it. I'm gonna alt tap the hoodie. It's not gonna take us that long. Alt tap this, and this. Oh, we haven't added thickness to those yet. This, let's go ahead and let's make these a little bit nicer looking. So I'm gonna go again, go into my, huh. let's go in here and say, insert single edge, we pull down alt, we'll get rid of those. I'm again, I'm gonna do a crease. Crease tolerance, I have 63 is probably fine. Turn on dynamic, crease level of two, smooth so div of three. That way it'll crease and keep those edges and then uh, kind of give me a little bit of a fall off read. So it's a little bit nicer to look at. Same thing with this one. Crease, dynamic, crease level of two, smooth so div of three. On this one, we got holes on it. Don't want that, turn off micro poly. And you know what, let's do smooth so div of four. There we go, cool. If we need to, we can go in here and be like, eh, move, move. Good enough. Uh, this is just leftover pieces from earlier, so we'll just delete that out of our scene. And then this is our piping uh, on kind of our, I guess it's like a scuba thing. So again, one more time. Uh, we can On this one, we can just crease polygroup. We don't have to crease by a tolerance. We already have polygroup set up. So crease your Paul Gabriel's there. Crease level of two, smooth of three. You got this one, and then same thing for these. These have thickness, correct? Yeah. So you can crease polygroup. I do want to keep these corners nice and tight, though. So this time we will do a crease tolerance of like 60s. Crease level of two, smooth of those of three. Same thing for this one. And then we'll just kind of fudge this over just a tiny bit. Now this is all dynamic. It's not real geometry yet, but if I'm getting the fall off and result that I want, I can go ahead and say dynamic apply. That's under your geometry dynamic menu and that'll turn it into real geometry. This I can leave alone, um, or these I can leave alone. I don't need to apply that geometry and make it real. That can just sit there in my scene unless I need to export it and bake. So anyway, like I was saying, uh, we need to get some wrinkles along here. You can go through here and literally, well, let's pinch this first a little bit. We'll pinch that back here. So you can't go through here and just kind of sculpt that puckering that I'm talking about. You just go through here and hold down Alt and let go of Alt and just kind of do that. Uh, let's try this though. First, quick save. If I'm ever hopping out of a sub tool, it's just safer for me just in case. I don't want to lose anything. Uh, so we're going to go back here to a plain 3D, edit, polyframe, make poly mesh 3D, Scale this down a little bit. Zero mesh half, depth size down to zero, and we'll get nice even quads. Good enough. 
and now I can sculpt my puckery on here. So let's go in here to our geometry smooth modifier, turn that off, we'll divide up, and now we're just gonna turn this into a, like a repeating roll alpha. Now you can, you know, build in like a seam line along here if you want to, but in this case, I think I just need the puckering. If that's not the case, I can hop right back in here, do the exact same thing. It's fairly simple. Like so. Now I could try using like an extractor brush to grab this, but I don't think that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go into my MRGBZ grabber, say switch. I'm going to start pulling out a rectangle. I'm just going to grab, using the space bar to move it into place, grab that. So now I have my depth alpha grab. I hope this works. It's been a while since I've done it. So now, if I go back to my head here, control N to clear my canvas, pull this out, and we have this geometry here, I can go in and do standard brush clone, because I don't want to mess with my standard brush, alpha, drag depth grab, depth grab, and now I can start um, sculpting with this alpha. However, um, doesn't seem to be doing much. And I wonder, hold on. Brush alpha drag rect. Hmm. Let's try this. Let's go in here to brush. Uh, let's go in our comma key, brush. Uh, what am I looking for, weave? No, not weave. Uh, stitch. We'll grab a stitch brush. So this stitch brush has an alpha built in. It has roll turned on. So if I swap this alpha out, oh, okay. So it is rolling that alpha, but it's a very long alpha. Let's see if we can compress this a little bit. So underneath stroke, roll distance. Okay, there we go. So stroke roll distance is set to one. I'm gonna set this to like 0.5. There we go. So we can kind of build in, you know, puckering along this seam a little bit faster. And let's take this to like 0.7. No. Let me play around with this. Because the roll distance of one Did I do something weird? Did I miss something? I must have had just a very big brush or something like that. And that's not giving me what I want at all. What the heck? You see alpha rotate? No, this can't be it. No. You know, it has been a while since I've done this, but I don't remember it being quite so touchy. Hmm. That's not great. Let's see. What am I missing here? Uh, I did it on my jeans on my one guy, my, my death from regular show. He can cut up on the comments, see if any of this come to me. Cool, John Yu, thanks for showing up. Uh, set a depth size of zero when you zero mesh to get even quads. If you don't set it to zero, it'll build in deformation of your geometry, which in some cases is okay. Um, but usually for what I'm doing, uh, no. Mm. Trim over knife. Knife will stop at open areas. Trim won't. Um, yeah, that's useful if you need that. Um, you can cloth fold a smooth brush. You can. You can hold down shift and turn on elasticity for smooth if you want to. Um, I don't think I've ever done that. But yes, you can. Mm. 
and using the curve brush, uh, how can you twist the ends? Well, you can go in here to B, I to brush insert. We were messing with the zipper earlier. Uh, let me grab this one here. Sorry, B, I brush insert zipper. I'm just finding something without sort of in history. Whoops, I uh, forgot we turned off curve mode. Stroke, curve mode back on. So now we have this. You can hover oh, while it's while it's red. You can change the brush size and you know modify the size of your brush. Then when it's blue, that's your modifier brush. So that you go through here and move this around. Um, you can also hold down Control and twist the ends if you need to. There's a lot of different ways to. Let's go ahead and say um, high point deleted. Cool, no problemo. I always say, how do you, uh, how do you do the grid? Oh yeah, this is this will be. I won't go over it again, but it'll be back in the stream. Cool, excellent. Alrighty, so what was I doing? Oh yeah, the pucker, the pucker I was working on. I mean, I guess I can just do it manually. It's kind of pissing me off that um, I can't just can't just do it. That's not great. Stroke, roll, distance, one, roll that alpha. Okay, maybe I do just need to turn down the intensity on my standard brush and then take that. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta get this, I gotta fix this. Um, 0.5, focal shift down, focal shift up. Okay, this is working a little bit more like I'm expecting. And you can see how the alpha is kind of popping out we can go into our midpoint of our alpha and we can drop that down a little bit. So under modify, you can take your mid value. If we put this at like 50, that would kind of set it in there a little bit more. Okay, that's that's closer to what I was expecting. Whew. So uh, roll distance, we'll put this back out to one. Sorry about that. Just had to take a little break. And 0.7. And then you can also uh, UV, if you don't like going around your mesh like this, you can UV uh, the, should I show you that? Uh, yeah, I guess I should. So we can go in here to Z plugin and you can say uh, UV master, uh, work on clone. Here's the lowest one. We have polygroups already set up, so we're good to go. Although on this one here, let's go ahead and say, hold on alt and paint this bottom one here and then let go of alt to get us a did that give us a new polygroup? Damn it. Tap, let go of alt, tap alt. There we go. And you know what? Let's take these ones, let's make those all control. Oops. Ah. Sorry, I accidentally hit control S. <sighs> Wait for it. There we go, control W. Make that all in polygroup. So you have this will be its own polygroup, and then this, and this will be its own polygroup. It is semi, it's mostly symmetrical. So I guess we can keep symmetry on, polygroups on. Um, unwrap, flatten, cool. And then we'll say unflatten, copy UVs, go back to our head, paste UVs. So now we have those UVs there. So we can go down here to UV map, turn bump down to zero, morph UV. Go into solo mode here, turn off polyframe. And then now you can go through here and you can, oops. You can go through here and you can, oops, turn off X symmetry. And like sculpt on this uh, flattened area and then you can unmorph the UV. And then I'll go through there and that'll give you that result. So now in order, since I turned bump off, what I would need to do is go in here with my standard brush. We'll do like a mid gray, turn on RGBZ at, or do BPA for your paintbrush. And then go through here and turn on next symmetry, and we'll just indicate to myself, like, hey, here's where your seams are. This is what you want to follow. And if you were really uh, amazing, you could actually set up your UVs so that they're symmetrical, so you can use your symmetry to do the next part. But I'm not, so what do you expect from me? And I think we need to flip our. Yeah, so on the back here is what we're looking for. And now we can go back in here with our brush and then our standard and then go through here and you can very quickly just be like, 
Again, turn off X symmetry. Maybe do a better job. Or V. And you could poly paint if you wanted to. Uh, the other cool thing, oh, you know what? Let's do this. I'm going to go back to before we did any. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to say edit, delete older undo history just to kind of get a little bit of a better read on where my undo history actually is. So before I start sculpting, I'm going to control tap that point and then I'm going to finish sculpting. I'm going to do an adjust last. We're just going to knock that down quite a bit. Then I'm going to go out of Morph UV because again, I could do a layer. Um, and knock that down, but adjust last is a new feature, so I'm going to use that. Um, we'll go ahead and turn off poly paint here, like that. And then on the inside, we could also do puckering. Um, there's also straps and buckles on the inside, but I'm not going to bother with that since we're running out of time. But you don't really see them with the hood up. Uh, what was I saying? I feel like I was saying something. Oh, another thing we could do. Uh, this has some. This has a pretty intense uh, pattern on here, so we can actually build this into the surface if we'd like. So we can go in here. Now that we have UVs, we can say to our surface noise, we go into noise plug. We can turn on our weave. Say OK. We'll zoom in just a little bit, and we'll go in here to our uh, mix basic noise down to zero. We have a plug-in scale. Uh, we'll go ahead and crank up that strength so I can kind of see it and then we'll drop it way down. You're going to see how it's fine from the front but then on the side it kind of, you know, it's a planar projection essentially. Uh, go in here and turn on UV. So now it's using my UVs and then I can say uh, plug and scale down, 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 strength up, 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 or the other way maybe. Yeah, Let's plug and scale down. Maybe not that far. I'm going to grab that. So when you click on a slider, sometimes it'll have a little top slider. That'll give you fine tune adjustment. Yeah, something like that. So then if you wanted to, you could apply that noise to the geometry. It's not on there just yet, but feel free. Uh, same thing for this one. Uh, we have subdivision history on here, so it'll be fairly easy, I believe. So we'll go in here to geometry. Sorry, UV master, uh, work on clone. Uh, we have polygroups already in here. I'm gonna say, let's enable control painting and I'm gonna say attract and I want that seam to be along the back. And then I'm gonna say uh, symmetry, it's pretty symmetrical. So I'm gonna say symmetry on, polygroups on, unwrap, flatten, there we go. So we'll unflatten this and then we'll say copy UVs. Again, go back to our body paste them UVs and then we can uh, let's go back to our hoodie we're gonna say surface noise edit save I'm just gonna drop this on my squid grain squid games reference as noise maker okay give it a sec and then we're gonna alt tap the body here surface noise um, open Okay, oh, looks like uh, the UVs are a little smaller, so we have to go back in here and all we gotta do is adjust that plug-in scale just to kind of make those, because I can see it here. All right. And like I said before, uh, the shapes on the helmet here, uh, I can just do as a planar projection. I can, well, we have to add thickness too. I can poly paint it as well, but uh, let's see. Let's do alt tap the micro, and we're gonna go in here to our, and again, this is all non-destructive. So I can go back to dynamic. I can turn my smooth subdiv down, change my hole size if I want to. I can also go in here to thickness. We can add thickness. I'm gonna, I want this thickness 
to, oops, actually I don't want to add thickness because the thickness that I add is going to add geometry and it's going to add micro poly that. So I want to undo that. So no thickness, but I am going to apply. So now this is real geometry. We had weld turned on, so it should have welded all my borders. So I think we're good to go. And then again, we could Q mesh this uh, and get that, get thickness on there, but I'm gonna go down here. This is work a little bit faster, I think. If I go down here to edge loop, panel loops, we're just gonna do one loop, polish down to zero, uh, and then just hit panel loops. And then I'll go ahead and um, bump out thickness. Do I still have? Let me see. Uh, where did we go? So had, uh, let me see. Panel loops. Polish. That's weird. Thickness. I'll bevel down to zero. Sorry. Uh, bevel down to zero and that'll, that'll just kind of pump in thickness and you're seeing it's going out if i want to go out and in i can say panel loops at elevation of zero and that'll go ahead and give me my actual geo so this is making that geo for real and i think that's about right so same thing down here we're going to say apply that dynamic and then in here we can say uh, actually we can go in here with our move back you and we can pull this corner out since it's not real geo just yet Uh, and then one more time, uh, polish down to zero, bevel down to zero, loops down to one, panel loops, double turned on, and again, elevation at zero, so it goes in and out. There we go. So now that that's real geometry, we can go in here. Uh, we can say, you know what, give me color, fill object, and then you can literally go in here with your standard brush or a mask and say RGB of white. Oops. Sorry, I had the wrong one selected. Color, fill object, and then white, and then go in here and just like literally paint. Oops, turn off Z add for any brush. Mask and paint what you want. It'll probably look fine. Um, you can also project that shape, which I suppose I think that would be easiest. So I'm going to turn off polypaint for all these. And one more thing I need to do, since I want three of these in the same scene together. We only got 1.6 million, so that's not a deal breaker. I'm going to control tap this point in history, then control tap it again to get rid of that history that I had stored in another subtool. Um, I think this will work. All right, so what I'm going to do is Go into my Z plugins here. There's a plugin you can download from this Pixelogic website called Clean Tool Utility. And we're going to say dynamic subdivision to actual subdivision for all my meshes. What this is going to do is, you know, when I went to dynamic and I hit apply to make a real geo, it's going to do it for all of my meshes. Um, although sometimes that adds extraneous geo where I'm not expecting it. I'm just going to do this. Alt tap this one because I know that's where I want it. Apply, alt tap, apply. Go ahead and turn off my hood here. Alt tap. Uh, okay, this is all real geo. So now up here, we didn't really mess around with this because you're not really going to see it. But since this is real geometry, you can go back in here with your pucker brush and you can kind of do the same thing. Kind of go through here and whatever this needs to be here. I'm going to take your time and do a good job and don't be like me and rush through everything. It looks something like that. Uh, and we don't want any seams in there because you can see it doesn't have a head. Okay, everything back on. Okay, so um, we got everything applied. I believe if I want to test that, I can go down here to Merge Visible. And that's going to spit out a merged version of my guy here and go through here and say... Yeah, everything looks fine. Um, this probably needs to be smoothed a little bit, so I'll delete that. I'm gonna go back down here to my head. We're gonna alt tap the zipper. I'm gonna hit D for dynamic, and then we're gonna say crease level of, D for dynamic, crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two, increase level of zero. Yeah, crease level of one. 
and we'll hit apply. Okay, I think we're good now. So now what I can do, I can say merge visible. I'm gonna save this scene as like my working file. So squid games, shape guy working. And then this is gonna be my render file here. So I'm gonna do a quick auto groups. And then I'm gonna take one, I'm gonna control drag out a copy here. And then control drag out a copy here. And then for these, I'm gonna say, okay, um, all, the sa all the things that I wanna have, I'm gonna render this in Keyshot real quick. So all the things that I wanna have the same material, I'm gonna split into its own subtool here. I suppose that plastic should probably be the same material too, but no biggie. Split uh, all these. So now when I throw this in the key shot, all those separate objects will have uh, different materials. However, on this object up here, I do, I think I wanna take all these out. We'll say split hidden, and then take this one and say split hidden, because I think I do need to have separate materials for those to project a shape. Okay, well, uh, I did lose my uh, surface noise, but I'm gonna add that back in, in a key shot for those, no biggie. Uh, Z, what are we doing? Oh yeah, we're rendering. Render, external render, key shot. You know what, um, just in case, I'm gonna turn off auto merge and we're gonna hit VPR. It's been a while since I've been in key shot. Hopefully it still works. Uh, pipeline question, why are quads important as opposed to stretched out? Um, usually you want nice even quads for nice texturing or just uh, even geometry distribution so it's a little bit more uh, predictable when you're using it. Using a mouse? No, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. What are the main differences in the ZBrush and Sculpting Mode and Blender? Uh, two very different programs. Uh, so the main difference would be they're two different programs. Um, apply this tiny pattern. Do we need to go crazy with subdivisions so it'll stay? Um, no, and in fact, you could do that in the texture, even in even in um, key shot. Let's see, edit preferences. You could have uh, just done these holes in the texture. You didn't have to do it in the model. We did it in the model just to kind of show off some functionality in ZBrush, but not required. Um, cool, Mickey. Uh, did you make the mask in this stream or previous one? This one, start to finish. I'm doing good. Uh, completely changed from clip brush using the knife brush. I still find like it's a clip brush without using that much of the knife one. Um, occasionally I'll use the clip for when I'm doing like dynameshy stuff. I'll still when I'm using dynamesh stuff where I know the clip brush isn't going to leave those nasty little thin meshes, I'll just use clip. Um, but yeah, I use knife brush quite a bit now. Um, oh yeah, the color changing makes good. Uh, Dynamic system, yes. Cool. Uh, uh, key shot inclusion, but no. Uh, oh yeah, we do have, um, if you missed it, let me see the marble set tool bag. We did recently on my art station page, I suppose would be the best, whoops, best place to look at that. Um, oops, I lost it. Uh, so there's Ninja Turtles here. Uh, here's the making of. So uh, we had uh, Marmoset 3, there's a plugin uh, here from Eddie. Uh, he made a cool Marmoset 3, you can take in and put in a movie this is Marmoset 3, by the way. Marmoset 3, put in, I couldn't get it to work before, but Marmoset 3, uh, import a movie, turn it into 
a texture sheet that has the frames from the movie on it so that you can apply it as a animated uh, material within Marmoset. And then you export that material in Marmoset 3, put it into Marmoset 4, and then um, here's the making of the little Ninja Turtles arcade here. And then this is all in, uh, let's see, file open recent. Kind of haven't touched this in a while, but let this load up real quick. Uh, so yeah, you could use uh, Blender EV Cycles, you could use uh, Marmoset, you can use the V-Ray I did for the Bison here. We did, uh, this is all V-Ray and Maya, you know, all these little things. And, and in fact, on the uh, Ninja Turtle Arcade, if you want to check out the Marmoset Viewer, I think it's somewhere down here. Uh, yeah, so here's the little turntables, and then in here you can actually go into the Marmoset Viewer and load that up, and you can check it out. It's not super high res, so I'll go ahead and you, know, you can check this out. And also it doesn't have the nice, really nice built-in stuff, but if you're looking for that, you can check those out. Uh, we got kind of a scene set up. Let me go to full quality here. So here's my naked turtle um, in here, and then you can see this is the, the Marmoset scene here. So go through here and change this and the skylight in here. Let's go ahead and add a child brightness so you get a little bit more of a shadow on here and also let's go into the skylight here and we'll change that diameter so you can get a little bit of a sort of fall off so yeah here's the here's the arcade uh, and in fact if we turn off let's go ahead and just delete that and the skylight brightness here see it's got all the emissive built in there and if we go to animate this is the animated texture here so you can see as this updates, you know, do 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 do, it'll update the, the reflections. So that was that was all that. Uh, input you made to select an entire polygon that's only partially visible. Control Shift A. That's visibility. Grow all. Uh, I am streaming this Thursday on my channel. Um, coin slot material was just taken from. Uh, Google Images and slapped into Photoshop. With a little emissive. This is all textured in Substance Painter. All the stuff in here. Even the, the back wall and stuff is in the carpet. All uh, Substance Painter. Uh, although the carpet was a bus seat back, uh, but then that was made titleable in Substance Designer. <laughs> uh, every time I insert a tool or a blank scene, my tools are flipped upside down. The wife insert a tool. Why is the floor tool? Why did I spin? The camera's preset is a problem. Um, you would have to capture. So if you want to do, if you want to look at, you know, IMM brush basics, enter the ZBrush. Use IMM brushes. This will teach you, I think, the right way to capture. Go back to uh, those IMM brushes. That might be your best bet. You have to have the camera looking the right way at your IMM brush to make it come in the right way. Cool. <laughs> cool, thank you, JC. So anyway, that was, um, I don't know why I brought that up, but, oh, that's another alternative. But anyway, just real quickly, let's go in here to our plastic. So we have hard, shiny plastic. We'll go ahead and just assign this to the bottom faces here. We'll double click this and we'll, um, we'll make this a little less shiny. I guess there was a, a rougher version of that plastic, but we'll crank up that roughness here. Let's also go in here to our environment. I want to do an interior environment. Ooh, that's a good one. This one might be perfect. <laughs> no spoilers, but this might be a really good um, environment. Let's go in here to environment here, color. Turn this down. Actually, I kind of like having the lighting environment in there. Uh, I just wish it could be, whoa, oh no. Um, F, F, nope, uh, home, frame. Uh, 
guess it can't move. Center and fit part. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, yeah. I was looking at the environment here. Can I scale it down size? That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so uh, we have the black plastic here. Let's go ahead and let's up that diffuse just a tiny bit there. So now we can hit OK. Now I do want to assign this black plastic to the other ones. However, when I do that, it's going to want to assign Alt Shift retain all your control retain all your rules. Shift add as a submaterial. Let's hold down Shift. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna assign these so that they maintain the same properties. Oops. However, I am going to go into my scene and select. Boy, it really wants to not select this damn mesh. I'm gonna select this mesh and I'm gonna say material unlink material. Because I'm gonna have to put separate labels on this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, I guess I want to do this right. So we need three shapes, and I'm trying to think the easiest way to do this. I guess I can just create them real quick with shapes. I think we'll have just basic shapes in Photoshop. So we want a black, no, we're just going to do transparent. So we're going to say file new, let's make it maybe a 1024. By 1024 and then double click the background and then make a new layer and we're gonna go in here to our shapes rectangle tool we have pixel selected we don't want any rounding Duplicate this, control T, hold down Alt. I'm just gonna pull this in, something like this. Control tap this one and just delete it off of the shape. So this will be our square. And then we need a circle. Alt shift. I'm stupid, um, make a new layer. There we go. Um, T. Just want to see what I'm doing here. There we go. I seem to see the thickness. Alt shift. Nope, just alt. Sorry, it's been a while since I've pulled out Photoshop. So here we go. Enter, control tap this, get rid of it. Delete out of there. Don't need this one anymore. So we got our circle, square, triangle. Do we have a triangle? Please, God, have a triangle. There we go. So new layer here. 
Alt Shift. We'll pop this one out just a little bit more than the other ones. Okay, and then uh, Control duplicate this. This one may not work as well as I'm thinking. Let me try this. Um, that works. Okay, so we're going to grab this down and we're going to reposition this. You could maybe even do, you could do like a stroke, but then you might run into like corners not being sharp. So just again, I'm coming to Photoshop all that often, so I'm just kind of goofing my way through. I think that'll be good enough. Control tap, get rid of, deleted. Control L for levels, make this white. Yoink. So now we have all of our shapes here. So now I'm going to save this one. Um, what's this? Is this? Control A. Copy, enter, paste. Background deleted. I'm going to say this is a PNG. Uh, control Shift S. Oops. Damn it. Photoshop. Stupid. Um, I'm going to throw this into my streaming folder real quick. Sorry, this is getting real boring. Um, we'll call this. PNG yellow square. You know what we could do? Since these are all uh, separate layers, we can go through here. We can select all of these and say uh, ex quick export as PNG. That'll be a little bit faster. Folder, select folder. And then, hold on. I don't really want to care about this, but squid game, squid game, squid games. Circle are the lowest ranking, triangles are the middle, squares are the bosses. Okay, so we got that. Sorry, spoiler alert if that was important to you. Um, it's kind of not, but Streaming reference. So we got layer one, layer two, layer three. So let's call this one square. Circle. Triangle. Ooh, all right. Back in a key shot. So now in order to put those shapes on here, uh, up, up at, the, at the front, we're going to have this guy here. So we're going to double click this to go to his material settings. We're going to go in here to labels. We're going to add a new label as a texture. And again, we're going to go down here to streaming and we're just going to grab square. There we go. And then we can scale this up as alt. Let's make sure it goes the right size and about there. Say OK. So there's my square. Um, and then on this plastic square, do you specular bomb? Okay, it doesn't have anything like that. So now I can double click this and we can make it rougher. Hmm. Oh, label properties. Uh, can I just get it to inherit? Yeah, okay. We'll say 0.25 for that. And then back here under properties. Sorry. And then over here we'll have circle. So double click this material. We're going here to labels. Add a label. And we're going to grab in circle. And for this label, let's go ahead and say put it to part. So I can see a little bit better. Planar project should be fine. Although I do need to, oh my God. All right, you know what? Um, trash that one. Add a new label. 
center on part. Boy, not great. Oh, what a pain. A more elegant way to do this, but all right, good enough. Hold down Alt, scale it up. Okay, and then one more. This one here, labels, add, and what do we got left? Triangle. Mapping type planar box cylinder. No UVs. I guess I could have done camera, but no. Oh well. Um, fit to, oh, there we go, z-axis, duh, sorry, uh, although this needs to be rotated the other way. Okay, we got all that, and then let's go into our scene here, select parts with material. original one here okay that's the bottom one so this bottom one here I'm gonna go ahead and assign it to the middle parts here let's go into uh, materials let's search for cloth cloth weave is probably fine we'll go ahead and assign it here if I can remember how to control left click sorry Cloth weave. Let's go into our textures here. Let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.5, oops, sorry, um, 0 0.01, let's say 0 0.05. Oh, it's too small. Ah, uh, boy. of them. There we go. Uh, so this and then underneath diffuse here we're gonna say the background, the warp color, and the warp color. So we'll say the background's gonna be, let's just do a quick selection from my reference here. Darken it up just a bit. And then this one will select this color and for this one, we'll select this color as well, and then we'll modify that, oops, as needed, if needed. Um, hmm. Here we got some variations built in, color variation. If we turn that down, it'll be more uniform. But this one, we'll go ahead and make the warp colors that's a tiny bit darker, maybe. to kind of break that up just a bit. All right, um, and then just a few more things. I'm not gonna do cloth, I'm just gonna do a basic plastic hard rough on this piece here. And then we'll just do, is that uh, black metal-ish? So we'll go in here to paint shiny. environment oops um, on this one I need to go into the labels here label properties and bump out that roughness probably the same thing for this one yeah hmm 
This looks, yeah. Hold on. Environment. Let's try this. Let's go into material graph here. I don't want to mess with, I want to see if I can mess with all the diffuse at once. So I'm going to go in here to a utility and say color adjust, color to diffuse. And that way, instead of messing with all three of those, I can literally just go in here to color adjust and say, you know what, let's lighten all of them up at once. Contrast. Because they are kind of a pinky. Let's say there's a zero. Or one. All right, something like this. Although realistically in the environment, I probably am just gonna, I don't know, plop that in later. But there's our anime head <laughs> thing. File, save as, I don't know what these guys are called. Squid Games, something or other. Streaming Squid Games. All righty. Uh, let's see. Ah, oh, sorry, I missed some stuff here. Um, so the videos are okay. Most set tool bag three, tool bag four. Uh, oh, that was that was that's easy. So basically, um, I can give you. It won't be a full tutorial, but I can walk you through real quick. Basically, this. Where's my art station page? Here, if you go to. The video importer. Um, you go into it's just basically right here. Open up Marvel Set Tool Bag Three. Uh, select your material. Select your um, color map or your emissive map. In my case, import the video. That'll make it into a material that looks like this. Export that material out of Marvel Set Three. Open Marvel Set Four. Import that material into Marvel Set Four, and then apply it to whatever object you want. So, that's basically what I did. Cool. Um, fresh scene, camera's not rotated. Why floor is at the top, X, Y, X, indicator points down. Uh, well, I'm not, not sure why that would happen. So if I go, let me see, we already saved this, right? Working, render, let me see, save as render. Shape guys render. So if I go in here to the comma key and just open up, you know, a default project, and we have our floor turned on, you know, Y up should be the default. Um, I mean, if it's coming in like this, it, you, you I, by default, whenever you open up ZBrush, um, it should be Y up you know, no matter what. So if I, you know, in your, in your instance where you have an arrow geometry, then I'm gonna launch ZBrush up. I'll see if I can recreate it. But it should be the default is, okay, I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna grab out an arrow 3D, drag it on my canvas, go into edit mode, turn on my floor. Y up, floor is fine. I would have to manually go in and rotate that around. At least in my ZBrush, I'm not sure why it would do that. Now, if you did want to make this a new startup project where you literally manually rotate it around, just go in here to File, Save, save it into your um, project folder, and then just double click that default project that you made. But again, ZBrush defaults are all Y up, at least in my case. Cool. Cool, cool everybody. Um, excellent, well, I'm gonna head out. Thanks, everybody. Um, this will be on their YouTube channel and my YouTube channel soon. And uh, Thursday I'll be streaming on my channel. We'll do something different. Maybe we'll go over the arcade making it up or something like that. Excellent, cool, I'm gonna head out.